Sheen Shop. Yeah, boy. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another Outward video. Today, we're checking out some more unique mini bosses, as I like to call them. These ones are all from the Abrasar Desert area, and honestly, there are quite a few of them to choose from. Numerous caves in this region have some sort of gimmick or puzzle that you need to solve in order to open up other areas to explore. And now that Definitive Edition is out, there are dangerous enemies that can kill you quite quickly if you aren't careful. This region has some of my favorite unique enemies, as it feels like a decent amount of effort went into creating them. So let's check out where they all are. Before we get into it though, just note that I don't think any of these enemies respawn or have replacements after you kill them, except maybe the Shell Horror variant. So they're only one-time kills per playthrough. If you exit Levant and head left, you will walk down some ramps and end up in front of the Undercity Passage. Guarding this area is the Bloody Alexis, who uses a Kazite Great Hammer and Silver Armor. Kazite weapons like this are not often found outside of the Antique Plateau, so it is kind of neat that he can drop it over in the desert. He's not overly difficult in his own right, but he can use Feral Strike, which deals fat amounts of damage while inflicting bleed and pain on you. Plus, you have to deal with numerous other bandits in this cave or dungeon, and they don't mess around. I highly recommend you pick off the bandits one by one before attracting the attention of Alexis as a combined battle against an army of desert bandits usually does not end well. This human is not really weak to anything in particular, but slightly resistant to decay or poison damage. Blocking works well here, but make sure your stability bar is mostly full or you will get knocked down. A really cool enemy to add, but one of the weaker ones as the main difficulty is getting grouped up on. The Executioner bug is probably going in my top 5 things added to Definitive Edition as he's actually challenging and makes his cave much more meaningful to complete. You will need to enter the slide from the entrance behind the wrecked ship in the middle of the desert. Walk left upon entering and grab the key near a rock mantis. Next, head back to the entrance and enter this more building-like area. Pull this lever after turning around to get the ornate chest as it's blocked off after you pull the lever. This will lower the water level in the entire cave, making other entrances and exits available to the player. Back at the entrance to this cave, you will see a ramp going down. There are multiple paths to this enemy, but if you follow the one I took, you'll come to a large underground area with mantis shrimp, slime, and eggs. This is where the executioner bug prowls, and if you look close enough, you can actually see a dagger sticking out of his back. It's a wolf dagger that you can loot from him upon ending the thing's life. Genuinely a hard enemy. Cold is its weakness, but he can cripple, extreme bleed, and extreme poison you all within just a few hits. I recommend blocking and using small attacks immediately after its tongue attack. Turns out there are one or two rock mantises here as well that will help you defeat him, and this may be a good idea as his stability bar and protection are quite high. It's extremely easy to miss this enemy as I don't think the player is required to even lower the water level for the most part, so be sure to check him out. Guardian of the Compass. This guy's actually nuts. He can be found in the walled garden just outside of Levant, and you can see a compass-shaped tree from a distance that lets you know this is the place. There are multiple golems in this area that you need to defeat first, or it's almost a guaranteed death. Bleed, burning, and poison don't work on him, and he's incredibly fast. Ethereal is his weakness, which means Dreamer Halberd or even a Spirit Varnish takes him down pretty quickly. However, he does a lot of stability damage in his attacks, and it can be hard to get your footing back unless you can easily knock him down yourself. The Ghost Drum, or Ethereal Totem, is pretty great if you have the stamina to kite him around, but just watch out as getting hit even once deals a significant amount of damage to you. He drops the Compass Wood Staff, which is really powerful for Fire Mages. Be sure to defeat him if you're going in that direction build-wise. Counter skills, in particular, are great against golems, as they give you much larger windows to deal damage. Maybe wait to defeat this robot until you're more into your build than I was in this video. 
Luke the Pearl Sons can be found in the ruins of Old Levant in the northwestern part of your map. He's not really reachable during parts of the game as a bandit refuses to let you enter until certain parts of your faction quest are completed. A good rule of thumb is to just complete the second quest for your faction as it should open up after you do so. Technically, there is a way in through the slide as well if you want to take that route. As he is a human, you will not have too much trouble defeating him unless you leave the numerous bandits alive that can gang up on you. First, defeat them, and then near the middle of this broken down city, you'll find Luke. He has resistance to every element, but decay is your best bet to quickly finish him off. He has very quick attacks and significant resistance to physical damage. I would treat him with caution, as he's dangerous compared to other bandits. Once again, counters and blocking is really nice here, as he doesn't really have anything unique to throw at you. He does drop a really cool chest plate called Pearlcent Mail that is lighter and has a damage bonus. Not only that, but he was actually in the original game if I remember right, and can be found by players without Definitive Edition. The Sand Rose Horror can be found in Sand Rose Cave in the southeastern area of your map. Upon entering the dungeon, you will need to defeat a few bandits and pull one lever. Walk down the now open ramp and kill one or two beetles that will be annoying if you don't take care of them. The Sand Rose Horror is just kind of hanging out in a corruption filled room at the bottom of the ramp. He's extremely weak to cold, so use that over lightning. I prefer to walk him back up to the area we were before, as corruption builds up quickly, and I'm not a fan of that landscape there, if you can even call it that. Blocking and turning in circles around him seems to make him pretty easy. Getting as close to him as possible means you can spin around behind him mid-attack for even more hits. Do be aware that his attacks will burn and bleed you, which the burning is unique to a shell whore, making him pretty difficult if you usually tank hits during combat. He's not that different from regular shell whores either, so regular tactics from them do apply here. Found in Stone Titan Caves, the last Acolyte is probably the best addition to Outward ever, as he fits so perfectly with the lore here. Basically, he is related to the Jade Lich from the Swamp, and was part of the massive plan to destroy Elat using a Leyline's power. You can read more about this on the runes inside this cave, and his skills perfectly match with the Jade Lich, so it's pretty cool how perfectly he fits with the story here. His armor does look really cool as well, and he drops an inner marble shield that isn't all that easy to find. Do be wary, however, as he's quite difficult. I suggest entering the cave and immediately taking a right so that you can kill the bandit here. Then move into the larger room to fight the acolyte. He has two abilities, which one blasts a wave in front of him dealing decay and lots of impact to you. The other is a green tendril that comes out of the ground and swings at you. Both inflict Curse, which makes you even weaker to his attacks, and the mass amount of decay damage he does shreds your health quickly. Getting behind him when he is casting a spell lets you avoid the attack and deal damage yourself, which is how I took him out. Decay will do very, very little damage to this enemy, so use lightning damage instead. Pay attention to his spells. And my only complaint is that he has a Tendril ability, which we can't get. Kind of bogus, as it would be such a cool ability, but then again, it could come from being a servant of the Jade Lich, so I guess the game kind of excuses it that way. The Thunderbolt Golem can be found in the Electric Lab above Levant. Enter the dungeon and go down the elevator. Walk off and pull this lever. Get back on the elevator and dodge off after pulling the lever to make it go down. You will now be in a secret area that lets you turn the elevator, unlocking a path in this dungeon. There are about three golems here, so use a spirit varnish and it isn't that big of a deal. The thunderbolt golem can be found after pulling this lever behind a bookcase. By far, the worst enemy added to the game, as his name is super cool, and he's merely a minute upgrade from the other Forge Golems. He uh, has lightning instead of fire, which I guess is different, but doesn't really change how you take them on at all. 
Use an ethereal varnish and try to split these two enemies up. Also, this mini boss drops some cool arrows, which is nice to have if you're manning a bow. Lastly, we have the Verulant Hive Man, and you will need to head over to Ancient Hive to find him. Simply enter the cave and follow this short path I take to get to him. I really dislike this hive enemy as well as as many versions as they spray bugs at you that punish you harshly in the health department. However, the assassin beetles in this cave will be of great help in taking him down. Either use them to deal a lot of damage or pick off the smaller hive before engaging the big boy. Attack with fire as it demolishes them and honestly just make sure you can poison yourself as I don't think I've ever fought these enemies without getting hive infestation. The Hive Man does have higher health regen than other mini bosses, so setting him on fire is a must. To be honest, mages have a much better time against these enemy types as they're better suited for ranged combat. Melee is definitely more challenging here, so be careful and take extra precaution if you went that route for your build. Fire Sigil is literally OP against this enemy, making him a joke, so try that if you want a hilariously quick battle. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, all of the mini-bosses Outward has to offer in the desert region. Some were in the game originally, while others were added in via Definitive Edition. These new enemies make the desert much more fun to experience, as many of the caves they occupy were either meh or just okay before. Even if the enemy itself isn't that tough, it adds more value to completing every dungeon and creates more unique encounters that make every playthrough feel special. Definitely try to defeat all these mini bosses if you can, as they're a fun challenge and occasionally drop pretty nice loot. Thanks for watching the video, and I will catch you in the next one.